Every JoJo part has a fan favorite character, like Speedwagon, Joseph, Mista, and more, but Part 3's most popular character is one of the series' most tragic and complex. I'm of course talking about Iggy. <coughs> Polnareff is one of JoJo's best written characters, and in a way, he's the actual protagonist of Part 3. Or at least he's given almost as much screen time as Jotaro, with far more complexity and backstory. Polnareff is a fan favorite and a total badass for a reason. Polnareff's story is about revenge, loss, sacrifice, and he's a character who, despite being surrounded by death, tragedy, and despair, remains as happy and hopeful as possible. This is one of JoJo's most tragic heroes, Polnareff. One rainy night on a French country road like any other, tragedy struck. A man with two right hands was the culprit. He took away the innocence and the life of a young woman. This woman would be Sherry Polnareff, John Pierre's sister. Vowing to get revenge, Polnareff went searching for his sister's killer, and that's when he met Dio. Dio offered Polnareff the power he needed to find the man with two right hands in exchange for Polnareff's alliance. Dio would then implant a flesh bud into Polnareff's head, gaining control of him, and sending him to stop the Stardust Crusaders. After a noble battle with Mohammed Avdal, the flesh bud would be removed, and Polnareff would join the Crusaders, at least until he found the man he was looking for. The Crusaders would later find the man with two right hands, named Jay Guile, working with a man named Whole Horse. Polnareff's short temper gets the best of him, and he decides to fight the duo alone. The Crusaders object, and Avdal even tries to stop Polnareff, but Polnareff leaves, furious at Avdol for trying to hold him back. All throughout Part 3, we get to witness Polnareff's short temper. Someone will piss off Polnareff, and Polnareff will go to confront him, just to find out that he's a stand user. And then Polnareff almost dies multiple times throughout Part 3, and then someone either has to come and save his ass, or Polnareff barely lives and defeats the villain. And there's a huge amount of fights that could have been avoided if Polnareff didn't have such a short temper. And later on, Polnareff starts to feel guilt. He feels like he's a liability. So often, he wants to prove that he can save everyone else, but so often, they have to save him. And during the fight with the Hanged Man and the Emperor, Polnareff gets overwhelmed. And then Avdol jumps in the way, saving Polnareff. And he takes a bullet to the head in the process. The man that Polnareff was so incredibly angry at, just a few moments ago, saved his life. Because Avdol is the best. Kakuin smacks some sense into Polnareff, and they go to take down Jay Guile. Polnareff then completes his mission. He ends the life of the one who ended his sister. But it didn't change anything. It didn't bring her back. It didn't find him any real peace. And he lost a friend in the process. Because of anger and vengeance, he lost someone else he cared about. And even though Jay Guile no longer walks the Earth, it didn't really bring Polnareff any closure. About halfway through the events of Stardust Crusaders, Polnareff stumbles upon a genie, which will grant him any wish he wants. He wishes for Avdol and his sister, Sherry, to be brought back to life. This genie, named Cameo, is revealed to be a stand, and it creates evil zombie copies of Avdol and Sherry that attack Polnareff, and they rip him to shreds. At this point, Polnareff should have known it was too good to be true. He should have known that it was a stand, or had something to do with an enemy stand user. But he so very desperately wanted to see his sister and his friend Avdol once again. He was willing to take any chance to see them one last time. He was willing to take any chance to bring them back. Mohammed Abdul. Yes, I am. Holy fuck, he's back! He's back! You remember when uh, this happened and Abdul died? 
A bullet to the skull usually kills. But Avdol fucking tanked it because he's just that fucking cool. Please go watch this video, please. Oh, and the rest of the Crusaders uh, apparently knew, but they kept it a secret from Polnareff because they thought that he would just blab about it and all the bad guys would overhear that and then they would just kill Avdol while he was weak and healing. I'm probably looking a little too deep into this, but it seems like the Crusaders see Polnareff as a little bit of a liability. But then again, technically Iggy is the biggest liability there. Plus, I feel like the good outweighs the bad with both of them. Polnareff, now with the help of Avdol, defeats Cameo and his stand user. And Polnareff moves on, realizing he can never bring back his sister. Even after he got revenge on the Hanged Man, he still couldn't move on. But now, he finally had the chance to move on. And he's happier. Don't worry, that's not gonna last for too long. Iggy has led the rest of the Crusaders to Dio's mansion. This is it. He's right in there. If we stop him, then we can save Jotaro's mother and the world. Darby's younger brother uses his stand to send Jotaro, Kakuin, and Joseph into a little pocket dimension. Why? To be fucking gamers and play fucking video games. Uh, or else they die, but you know, video games. Because Jotaro, Joseph, and Kakuin are too busy gaming, Avdol, Polnareff, and Iggy have to wait outside. If Jotaro, Joseph, and Kakuin don't return in time, then they've been instructed to burn down the mansion. They obviously don't want to burn down the building that their friends are in. Avdol says that they each have to worry about themselves, and if they see another one of them in danger, don't intervene. They have to keep themselves alive. No sacrificing yourself to save anyone else. Polnareff and Iggy reluctantly agree. And then... Avdol just sacrificed himself to save Iggy and Polnareff. Right after he said that everyone has to worry about their own safety, he went against his own rule. Polnareff grieves the loss of Avdol, saying that he was a fool and that it should have been him who died. Avdol, kinda, died twice to save him. And they always say that a phoenix will rise from its own ashes, but what if the ashes are, like, disintegrated and erased from existence? Yeah, Avdol's not coming back. And even though I wish Avdol didn't die, or, you know, he died at the hands of Dio, his death is still pretty fucking baller. And now it's up to Iggy and Polnareff to stop Vanilla Ice and his stand, Cream. Cream can eat itself and basically turn invisible. And anything that goes inside its mouth is erased from existence, except for itself and its user. Also, shortly before this, Dio made Vanilla Ice into a vampire, so he can regenerate from a bunch of injuries. And with Avdol now dead, Iggy and Polnareff are kinda fucked. This is by far their most brutal and most difficult battle so far, and it's one of the most brutal fights in all of JoJo. And for about 99% of the fight, Iggy and Polnareff are getting their asses kicked. <laughs> In the end, Iggy sacrifices himself to save Polnareff, and Polnareff burns vanilla ice in the sunlight. And Polnareff watches the spirits of Avdol and Iggy, two of his closest friends, ascend into the heavens. A reminder that they sacrifice themselves to keep him alive, and they're the reason that he's still here. Polnareff goes to confront Dio on the stairs, and then every time he goes up the stairs, he gets pushed back down, which, if you know about JoJo's, you know that Dio has the ability to stop time. So he stops time, grabs Polnareff, brings him back down a few steps, walks back up the stairs, gets in the exact same pose he was in, in the exact same position, and resumes time. Why is Dio this extra? Because he's Dio. Slay. Also, the scene has some symbolism, as it's supposed to represent a man looking up at God. This will be important later on. Dio is crazy fucking overpowered, and the only person that's able to stop him is Jotaro after he learns Time Stop. And Dio would have won too if he didn't get cocky and just finished off Jotaro. Polnareff does try to fight Dio, but because he's so outclassed, he just gets bitch slapped. And in the end, only half of the Crusaders make it back home. Abdal and Iggy died to Vanilla Ice, Kakuin died to Dio. 
Wait a minute, Vanilla Ice killed more of the Crusaders than Dio did. Dio's a bitch. And we see Jotaro and Joseph depart from Polnareff at the airport, saying one last goodbye for now. And on the last train home, there were a few empty seats. When Dio was alive, he possessed many strange items, one of which included an arrow, a stand arrow. It would pierce someone, and if they were worthy, they would be given a powerful stand. And if they weren't worthy, they would catch a virus and die. The rest of the remaining crusaders found out about the arrow after Dio's defeat. And in the early 90s, Polnareff and Jotaro would split up and go across the world searching for the last remaining arrows, trying to make sure they don't fall into the wrong hands. Polnareff then went to Italy. What he didn't know is that almost everyone there was secretly working for a guy named Diavolo. Or Diavolo. Diavolo had managed to spread so much of his syndicate into every crevice of society. Diavolo was very protective of his own identity, and he feared that his identity could have gotten out, and so that's why he took the opportunity to try and kill Polnareff. Polnareff would survive this encounter, but he would be horribly disfigured. He would be unable to walk, missing both of his legs, some of his fingers would have been cut off, and he would be blind in one of his eyes. Jotaro and Joseph, the last remaining crusaders besides Polnareff, would never find out what happened to him. He couldn't have contacted Jotaro or the Speedwagon Foundation because Diavolo's men would have tracked the phone call and finished the job. Right before meeting Diavolo, he managed to retrieve the Beetle Arrow, the only arrow that has been shown to activate Requiem Stands. While in hiding, Silver Chariot would go to pick up this arrow and accidentally be penetrated by it. Polnareff would notice it starting to change and he would take the arrow away before something bad would happen. And that's when he realized that there was a secret to these arrows. Diavolo would then later try and use this arrow to power up his own stand and try and achieve King Crimson Requiem. Towards the end of Part 5, Polnareff would get in contact with Passione and become sort of a mentor to them. He would also inform them about Diavolo and his plan involving the arrow. And this is kind of a side note, but I just really like this detail in JoJo. But in Part 3, Polnareff was on the stairs looking up at Dio, meant to represent a man looking up at God. And right before the final battle of Part 5, he looks down the stairs and sees Diavolo in the shadows. This is meant to show a broken man looking down and seeing Satan. And we all know that Giorno is the son of Dio, and he's meant to represent the Son of God, and Part 5's story is about the Son of God fighting against the devil. Giorno is Jesus Christ. In order to keep the arrow away from Diavolo's hands, he stabs it into Silver Chariot. Silver Chariot begins to flee and mutate when all of a sudden... In his final moments, he remembers his best friends, the Stardust Crusaders. Polnareff's alive. Silver Chariot Requiem's ability is to take someone's mind and put it in the body of someone else, and it basically switches everyone's bodies. Polnareff's soul, right before he died, went into Coco Jumbo, this fucking turtle that Passione has. And now, as a turtle, he must help Passion defeat Diavolo. Giorno then obtains the arrow and gets Gold Experience Requiem, and defeats Diavolo. Later on, Giorno becomes the new head of the Mafia and keeps the streets safe and drug-free. Now joined by Trish, Mista, and Polnareff. And if Purple Haze feedback is canon, then I guess Fugo as well. And that's the last we see of Passion and the last we see of Polnareff. Passion and Polnareff don't come back in Part 6, and Part 7 and onward is its own different universe. We don't ever get to see if Polnareff reunited with Jotaro. And for the rest of his life, I guess he's just chillin' with Jorno, the son of the man responsible for getting all of his friends killed. Polnareff's story started with tragedy, the loss of his sister, and then he would go on to lose all of his best friends. He would live long enough to see half of his friends die, and of the three remaining crusaders, I don't think any of them had a really happy ending. Sure, Joseph lived a full life, but after part three, he goes really senile, plus he cheated on his wife. Instead of being remembered as this great hero who stopped the Pillarmen and helped stop Dio, he's just seen as an old fart. 
Jotaro, well, we know what happened to Jotaro. And he lived to see all of his friends die too. And he even lived to see Polnareff go missing, and he never found out what happened to Polnareff. Him and Polnareff go out to look for the arrows, and then he never hears back from Polnareff again. And yes, even though Jotaro died, like, because of the ending of Part 6, everyone kind of got brought back, but reincarnated, and it's, it's weird. And Polnareff almost died to Diavolo. And after his fight with Diavolo, he was left crippled, half blind, and he couldn't contact Jotaro or the Speedwagon Foundation because Diavolo would have fucking killed him. And in the final battle of Part 5, he's meant to die, and he gets killed by Diavolo, and he sees all the memories of his friends in Part 3. What was meant to be his final moments was him looking back on the life he had, and maybe he was thinking that he'd finally be able to see Iggy, Avdol, and Kakuin again. Maybe he'd finally be able to see his sister again. But those weren't his final moments, and now he's trapped in the body of a turtle, an animal. Who knows, maybe he likes living his life as a turtle, but there's a good chance he doesn't. So many times, Polnareff was supposed to die, but he would either get saved by someone, or they would give up their life to save his. And right when he was supposed to die, fate had other plans. After everything he had been through, he still couldn't catch a break. And that is the tragedy of Polnareff. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell notification, and consider joining the Patreon for just a dollar a month. This video took me way too long to work on because life got busy, and also Fortnite had a really good season. I'm gonna be honest, I just I just want to play a shit ton of that. Plus, I think I needed a little break since I felt kind of burnt out making these videos. I need to get that energy back. More videos are on the way. Hopefully they'll be not shitty, and hopefully they'll be consistent. But anyways, thank you all for being so patient. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have an awesome day.